the country you are. Uh, high tech familia, hello, bienvenidos. Thank you so much for joining us for our first ever high tech live webinar. On behalf of the entire high tech team, we want to give you all the biggest virtual hug. We want you to know that we're thinking about all of you and we can't wait to get together in person soon. And I'll tell you this right now, be ready because it is going to be some kind of party once we are all able to get back out and see each other and enjoy each other's company. Uh, in, in, in a serious moment, uh, as we navigate these difficult times, our thoughts are especially with those affected by the virus, including those who are out of work and particularly those who are sick. We are incredibly thankful for our healthcare workers and for others who are caring for people around the world during this crisis. Uh, I want you all to know that here at High Tech, we are committed, we remain committed to helping drive value for our community. And we are driven to create new opportunities to connect, to inspire, and to grow. Uh, we have been blown away by the response to this High Tech Live initiative which we launched uh, a little over 24 hours ago. Um, in the time that we sent the email out yesterday morning, we had uh, close to 200 people register to participate in today's session. I, I see right now that we have 78 people on the line. We hope that that, that number continues to grow. Uh, we certainly understand that uh, these are unique times, uh, but we wanna be able to create these opportunities for us to come together, even if just virtually, to connect with each other, to inspire each other, and to continue to grow as individuals and as leaders. Um, this is something that we're going to continue to do. Uh, it is brand new for us, so we plan on um, we plan on, on learning and adapting and iterating on the process here. Uh, and we want uh, we want to hear back from you. So we're hosting this summit, this uh, this webinar session today. We will have um, another one in uh, next Friday and then the Friday after that. Um, and then the third Friday from then will be Good Friday. So we're gonna take that week um, and uh, hopefully take uh, some learnings from uh, these first couple of sessions and then um, iterate and see what days make uh, better sense, what platforms make better sense and hopefully uh, learn as we go. That said, uh, you should all expect to receive a survey shortly after we're done with today's session. We want to hear back from you. We want to hear what's uh, what's working, what could be better, different uh, topics that we might uh, want to consider. We want to hear back from you because we want to make sure that we are serving you. Um, also want to um, invite all of you to participate um, for our first in our first high tech virtual town hall, which will take place Next week, Tuesday at 3 p.m., um, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we were hard at work preparing for the High Tech Spring Leadership Summit uh, hosted at McKesson in Irving, Texas. And obviously, given the environment and everything that is, that is going on, um, we, we made the call about two weeks ago to postpone that session. Um, it was a difficult call, but, but, but now two weeks later, it was obviously the right call to make um, and certainly at the time that we made it. And so even though we're not gonna be getting together in person next week at McKesson, um, we wanted to bring everybody together uh, in, uh, in this virtual format. And so we are going to be hosting a virtual town hall. Um, and um, obviously we're not gonna be able to get together in person, but we still wanna give you the updates on things that we're working on. We want you to hear from our leadership. We wanna hear from you. We wanna be able to connect uh, in a meaningful way um, not just uh, not just today and next week, but for however long um, this situation will 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 continue. Uh, so I hope that all of you are able to join us. And the follow up email will send you the registration link um, so that you can register. And we look forward to seeing all of you there. Um, and now it is my pleasure to introduce to you um, the first presenter for our High Tech Live. Um, webinars. She is an award-winning serial entrepreneur, an international speaker and author. Uh, Silvina Moschini has established herself as one of the foremost experts on the digital economy and how the fourth industrial revolution is transforming the global workforce, empowering women and accelerating government reform across the world. She's a LinkedIn influencer, 
comprising a list of 500 plus worldwide leaders, thinkers, and, and innovators. She's the founder of an ecosystem of companies harnessing the cloud to connect businesses and on-demand talent, including transparent business, a remote workforce management platform that is driving transparency in public and private procurement to eliminate fraud and the loss of taxpayer money, as well as SheWorks, an innovative platform that leverages technology to close the gender gap. We're going to be talking about remote work, something that many of us have been used to uh, for a while, but something that I think every single company in the world right now is, is, is now forced to face as the new reality. So with that, I will turn it over to Silvina. Silvina, thank you very much. Um, and we look forward to hearing back from everybody. Thank you, Omar. And above all, I'm a part of high tech family and I'm extremely grateful by the opportunity to, to be here today to kick off high tech life and share a little bit about our experience and how we uh, build a remote first company and how we are helping companies to um, navigate in these challenging uh, times that we are living due to coronavirus. So thank you very, very much. And thank you for everyone to join me here. Thank you, Vivi, for the invitation and as well. And if it's okay with you and I'm allowed to share the screen, I will start with a, a quick introduction of how we see that this opportunity, that this, this challenging time that we are living can turn into an opportunity for all of us for forever changing the landscape of uh, how things are done and how remote work can actually work for everyone. Vivi, can you please allow me to share the screen? I think you just, you just did. So give me one, one second and I will and one thing that I want to, to show you is that we are living, we are working live on the presentation. We uh, decided to take this uh, incredible challenge to put together a, a webinar for you in one day. So I have three designers and one of my, my assistants working as we speak on the presentation. So perhaps you will see some changes coming up, but this is just a very clear illustrations of how things powered by technology looks like when collaboration it's uh, done by an amazing set of team of professionals who work from different locations. My designers are one in Argentina, one in Mexico, and one it's in Puerto Rico, and they are working as we speak to, to make this happen uh, as a very um, committed and, and engaged uh, team. Please let me know if you see the, the presentation already. Are you okay? Can, can you hear me? Okay, let me... Uh, I cannot hear you. I just want to make sure that you see the pre presentation. We can... We can awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome, because I, I lost you for a second. So, uh, so let me, let me start off how we can make our remote work efficient and verifiable. And to start that, I just want to say that we are living the perfect storm for digital transformation today. Not only coronavirus, but the convergence of things that you as IT experts know much better than I do. Uh, it's a, a largest revolution in terms of uh, technology and, uh, and changes in the way things are done of our living history. Cloud technology, machine learning, changing some models towards on-demand business models, data analytics, artificial intelligence, a growing conscious um, and concerns about taking care of the environment. So all this disruption together with coronavirus are part of the uh, massive changes that we are seeing today in the work space, and most importantly, a demographic change. The millennials becoming 75% of the workforce are shaping and are reshaping the way things are done. But today with coronavirus, millions of companies have been forced to move to work from home models with no preparation and no uh, a training or not a tools or processes to get them done. So the new reality of work is global teams working from home 
by millions and no training to make these things work. This is challenging because despite being uh, living the perfect storm for transformation, companies at large are very unprepared to handle this situation. So we are seeing how in the market that this transition to abrupt transitions to remote work is happening that first thing they change their people to work from home when second week or day 10 is i think it's the key a tipping point happens they start to see what are the challenges of making remote work and this could present a massive opportunity but if we don't do it right it can be total chaos as you know companies such as uh, hp and yahoo that had allowed work from home in the past vanished because they deployed without processes and without uh, the proper technology and rules of engagement in place. So this could be chaos or it could be a massive opportunity for uh, taking the crisis as a baseline to build a new wall of work. And when we build a new wall of work, there are many benefits, but there are challenges. And we have been working uh, remotely and building technology to work remotely since 2009. When I moved to Barcelona and first to Italy during the first uh, crisis that we suffered here in uh, the United States, especially in Florida, with the real estate crash, I decided to move with my partner, who is also my ex-husband, to Europe. And as you know, and I learned that from Eric Smith, which is one of the persons that I really, really admire, he said scarcity breeds clarity. So at that time, as an entrepreneur, having a distributed team of over 300 people, I decided to uh, tackle this by using technology to have better visibility on what my team was doing. So I could reward the people that were working great and I could hire better people on flexible models. So we developed a technology to help ourselves to have visibility of what was going on in our own company because we at that time saw that the world was shifting towards much more flexible type of engagements with freelancers and remote workers and there was no need for us to spend a lot of money in infrastructure like Cisco estimates that approximately $20,000 per person per year is a spend for having someone in an office. So we did that out of the need. And as you know, entrepreneurs are this kind of people that when they are thrown from a plane, they build a parachute on their way down. So we decided to do this to improve our efficiency as a company. And when we do it, we basically change the company from managing, uh, like if we were managing a plane with an instrument, to have a data-driven company, digitizing the workflow and helping uh, our business to understand exactly where we were spending money. But we encountered three challenges that were related to remote work. One is the trust or the lack of trust. When we have people working in an office, we wanna make sure they show up at work. When we have people working remotely, this showing up at work is showing up at the computer and proving that they are actually doing what they are supposed to, to do. So we have to learn how to use technology to shift the monitoring from the people in their physical presence to build the uh, trust by making sure that they actually show up and they are working, not just uh, in some cases warming up a chair. Analysts estimate that 35% of the time of uh, people in an office is spending non-productive tasks. And this is sounds also one of the reasons why work from home programs in a, addition to save money in terms of infrastructure can become also a massive productivity booster. But then by uh, practicing this over the years, we learned that the keys also to success were engagement and collaboration to drive productivity as well. And we learn and practice with different tools and different processes and different solutions to make sure that no matter where the team members were, that we all have a same vision, the same tools 
and the technology to see, to bring transparency into the workflow, to understand exactly which each one was doing. And then accountability. We have the trust by making sure they are actually working. We have the tools to collaborate. And then the challenge was, how do we make people accountable? And again, this is not only about the technology. The technology is an enabler. Uh, the accountability comes also by using technology to verify the uh, compliance with deadlines, verify that people are actually delivering what they need to deliver in the, at the right time, and also being able to reward their performance. So when we think of traditional uh, work uh, environments in an office, people may be seated and working uh, a little bit and then spending a lot of time in social media and we believe they are working. When we take people to work remotely, we have no idea what they are doing. They are home distractions, shopping online, playing on computer, and there is always Netflix as well. So what we did was to bring transparency into the workflow, but making sure that no matter where the team is, we actually see what they are working on, how they are progressing, and also adding data to this to understand what is productivity and what is not. So we do believe that transparency is the new norm. That is why Omar was telling uh, when he, he was going over my short bio that we're working with governments because also for governments, this type of transparency and verification of materiality of work done helps to avoid overbilling. So the trust is powered by technology and this can help to make remote work actually work for everyone, but it also eliminates overbilling when it's uh, come to dealing with contractors that are sending uh, bills in the traditional way, which is based on the code of honor. So when we think about transparency into remote workforce management, we do believe that it's important to keep in mind that there are perhaps verification of hours, verification of deliverables for SOW, but also real-time information on how the work is evolving because this is important for business continuity and government continuity. And when we do that, when we bring the right tools, the right processes and the right policies in place, work from home instead of being a nightmare that we have to face because of coronavirus and having to shift abruptly, abruptly these uh, work models, it can be probably the best thing that could happen not only for companies, but also for people. And I'm a social impact entrepreneur. I'm deeply concerned about the challenges that professional moms face when they have to balance work and life. And I think that also work from home can be a massive benefit for them to be able to do what they love and being close to the people they love as well. So even though we do believe that we are in, time, in times of crisis, this could also be an opportunity to do things right and to take, to change forever the way the work is done and being much more inclusive and diverse, having moms, having people with disabilities, having veterans, having also people that lives in remote places, acquiring the talent that we won't find and this is something that I talked to scale ups that suddenly they got a lot of money and they need to hire massively. And they complain like many companies do that they, they cannot find the talent they need. And I tell them like, this is just basically like finding love. And I know about this because I met my husband in match.com. It's a numbers game. And it's as simple as opening up the pipeline and then from this broader pipeline, you can choose the best candidate for the job, regardless of the location. So we do believe that talent is here and the opportunity is there. With remote work, we can connect them and we can basically disrupt unemployment, but we can also tap on the best skills for the job by opening up this, this talent pipeline. And it has many benefits, the access to resources, the flexibility, the efficiency, the cost uh, reduction, and these are just something because at the end of the day, the work is something that we do, not a place where we go to. This is what millennials think. And this is how we all should think in the digital age. Perhaps coronavirus will have 
if they have a silver lining of bringing us an acceleration on the transformation of what, how the work is done to become much better at uh, retaining talent, at acquiring talent, and at helping people build a better balance of work and life. But when we think of remote teams, we have to think of four areas that are key. How we manage culture, how we manage the teams and set up the teams, how we manage processes, and what kind of tools we should use and leverage to make remote work work efficiently and work for everyone. And when it comes to culture, there are like hours I can talk about that, how you build culture with distributed teams, how you build culture in remote first teams. There are many different things that can be done. One of thing, these things is the communication. People, when they work remotely, if they don't have like proper communications protocols, they are at risk of feeling isolated. So it's very important to have a very uh, efficient and fluid communications structure and interactions to help them feel that they are part of a community. As you know, millennials change the way we see cara a cara by FaceTime. This is also what needs to be engaged in communications uh, for the digital age to bring together the digital team as uh, now we are all called as we are doing today. The community, the building of the community, no matter where you are, it's always the glue that brings the team together. And then how you convey as a team leader the narrative on what you do and why you do it. There is one a professional speaker that I really like a lot, which is Simon Sinek, that talks about why we do things. And this is super important, how we convey the vision, how we convey the values, because the values and the vision do not change because people are not collocated and are distributed instead. So these are things that are very important because technology is always the enabler, but it's people that make things happen. And this is also that anyone that, as you know, has uh, experience in HR works leading teams, entrepreneurs, project leaders, managers, they know that the key differentiator for right or wrong, for getting it right or failing, is how do we bring the people together? And then when we think of teams, there are two things that are super important. The autonomy, giving people the autonomy to work what they do, but with transparency to be able to how things are evolving and being able to collaborate in real time. Because we don't wanna reach day D and then realize that things were a total disaster and the company is collapsing. But also the leadership. So when we work in remote teams, we need to be able to train and prepare and enable the work of the team leaders that will be leading remote work. They need to have a clear vision of what they need to accomplish. They need to have a process understanding to be able to enable people to work remotely and they need to be able to drive that vision. So it's very important to train the project leaders and the team members on the tools, expectations, protocols, and what is expected from them when they work remotely because it doesn't happen magically. It doesn't happen magically for anyone. And then when we set up this, we, and sorry about the mess up of the, the, the slide, I see that something got, got up. We need to think of how we standardize the project delivery, how we set up the protocol for how things need to be delivered, how we set up a clear structure of communications the way that we store the information, the way we deliver the information, the way we're reporting, expectation settings. And this is all about how things get done, how we communicate, what are the protocols. These soft skills that are always a very important factor for success or failure become much more important in remote teams because we only have the written word in many cases. So we need to be aware of cultural differences. We need to be aware of the impact that the written work have and being sensitive to that. Then how we sign off projects as well. So how we make remote work work for everyone. There are four, three factors that are extremely important. Trust with collaboration and engagement and accountability. And I'll tell you very briefly how we do it. We set up a company that is 
absolutely remote first, means there are no people that are working in an office. We have offices that people can go if they want to get away from home, which is not a very rare consideration in many cases. Uh, but there are these uh, offices that are there basically to help uh, people have a place to network or do collaborative work. This could be also a co-working space. But the main idea is to provide the opportunity to do team teamwork. And this is Marie Cruz, is my chief of staff. She is a single mom working in Frank in the city of um, it's a city of 5,000 people in Santa Fe province. It's a, she is an amazing human being who is taking care of her kid and lives in a teeny tiny city, top level professional working with Google in Mountain View, uh, with MasterCard, with many companies from a city that local opportunities will be reduced to probably something that is not up to their level of expertise. We, uh, I, I met Mar Marie Cruz uh, a couple of times. We work as a team seamlessly, uh, extremely, uh, with extremely fluid communications and accountability and engagement. And this is how we set up the company. And when it comes to what we, what we are doing, we're also talking a lot in the media about this, on how we make remote work work because coronavirus shift this from being a vitamin, something that can make companies productive, to being a, an aspirin, something that we need to do and we need to do it right because otherwise we will be challenged uh, with continuity in business and companies will lost a lot of money and some, some of them will be out of, of business. So I'll tell you a little bit about how the technology that we develop uh, works uh, and then some of the other tools that we use to, to get, uh, to make job transparent. As we said, one challenge is the monitoring, how we build trust, shifting the monitoring from the person physical presence into the, the workflow, making sure they are working. So through technology, you can actually follow the path of work of every team member if you need to and make sure also that you can provide real time feedback on how they are evolving. Usually you don't see the screens unless someone new is working and then you can provide the uh, support or the indications or instructions. So this allows people to start working and then sharing what they are doing, having uh, a, giving the manager the visibility and the peace of mind that things are progressing despite uh, being uh, not co-located in a, an office and working remotely from anywhere. So you can see that and then you can actually provide the resources and, and the information on what is done. You can also do collaboration and this is something that is extremely important via video conferencing. Video calls are a mandatory factor for team engagement. It gives you face time in a digital way. And as we said, like millennials uh, said that uh, the cara cara now is FaceTime or Zoom and, and this is extremely powerful. So forget about the traditional uh, conference call, video call. If you want to build engagement, keep people accountable, it's a must into this um, a remote a first ecosystems and, and, and systems that we are seeing now. Also, you should be able to see the skills of the people and uh, their assessment of their performance and also what type of technologies and work they have done. And as I said, the collaboration. We have one collaboration tool that it works great for us, but there are many different fantastic tools in the market for collaborating. And this means shifting the physical presence and the knocking on someone else's door into putting all the discussions online by groups, by person, the assets centralized, centralized because it becomes critical for business continuity. And then another thing that it's important is how you manage projects, because you said that we said that we have to keep people accountable and accountable is not only about making sure that they log the time, it's making sure that they progress according to plan. So having project management tools 
that are uh, fully digital, it's extremely important to see what the team is doing and how things are progressing, regardless of where they, they are. In our experience, it gave us much more visibility and control on the status than having people in an office, because even if you have people in an office, we have no idea what they are doing and how they are progressing in real time uh, in the projects they are working. So digital can bring that advantage and also the ability to track the results and what's uh, act on whatever tasks are identified as problematic. And then of course data. And as I said, accountability also brings the responsibility of managers to being able to provide feedback in real time. So there are many different tools that can be used for, uh, for, for that. We, uh, in our experience, have fantastic results with Zoom uh, for video conference and also Teams is a fantastic tool for collaboration and overall in video conferencing. In Slack, there are a project management tools in addition to what we have that work great like Monday, Basecamp, collaborations platform like ShedCab, uh, time tracking applications that also can help you to, to get this done. What we did here was to basically put together a set of uh, recommendations and, and solutions to make sure that remote work works in an efficient manner for not only the person that is working from the house, but also from the, the project leader that has a responsibility to make things happen. And his responsibility uh, relies basically on having other team members doing their thing. So I don't wanna bore you with more details. I would love to, to open this for, for questions. If there is something that you would like to go deeper, I'm here for you and let me know whatever it's, uh, you want to, to, um, to, to ask or if you want some more details in any specific area. Daryl, go ahead. Uh, Silvina, how are you doing? This is Daryl. I know we've been- Hey Daryl, yes. Good to hear from you. Yes, quick question. So I, I know that I've been looking at Transparent Business, you know, myself a little bit and seeing this demo, it's a great collaboration mixed with workforce management tool. I can see it work really well for the hourly workers and even for salary that are working with clients. But um, so I really see the need for this, but how do you integrate to uh, a payroll solution, let's say like an ADP or uh, paychecks to not only monitor the work uh, and the collaboration, but move that time into a payroll solution to pay out the hourly workers. We are fully integrated with ADP. Actually, ADP is um, a, a seller of our technology. It can be bought from them with a click. So in the case of ADP, it's fully integrated. Uh, we partner with them to basically have like a white label solutions that they can sell through uh, their own team. So it's absolutely seamless. In the other cases, if they have APIs, it can be also, also integrated. Okay. Thank you. Great. So is this mostly for a follow-up question? Uh, what, how low can you go as far as employee base to utilize, you know, the platform? It is for computer based only. So if someone is doing a, their job in the computer, no matter what type of um, skills the, the person have or the, the role in the organization, it can work, for example, in our experience. Uh, it work for um, IT work that is pretty much uh, at large uh, computer based, designers, programmers, researchers, uh, uh, business process outsourcing, so anyone that is working primarily in the computer can mm -hmm. use the technology and the technology, what it brings is a layer to have the visibility and the tracking of the, the effort made. And you can, you know, check uh, if it works for you to use it for productivity and uh, collaboration enhancement, but the baseline is to, it works as a background in any kind of application mm -hmm. to show that people are actually uh, checking in in the computer and doing their job and then you can add from that many other uh, additional functionalities so it can work from 
eh, support teams to senior management. Usually, higher, manage, eh, higher management levels are eh, much more results eh, eh, oriented and measured based on, on data and spend more time outside the, the computer because they are really not doing <laughs> eh, computer-based work, but in our experience, uh, eh, from mid-management down, in computer-based work, it works greatly. They can also add the offline time with cards, time cards that can uh, be added. And when you see the, uh, the report, you can separate based on the time spent uh, uh, trackable and the time that is, is spent reported as a self-verification. Okay, so, you, so the, the pricing model is per user then, you know, depending on... Yeah, it's like, uh, 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 sorry, same cost, same thing, software as a service. Okay, great. That's all. Thank you. Any time, We have one more question from Guillermo Diaz. Hola, Guillermo. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Now I cannot. Two questions for you. Um, the first one is really around, so you talked about this new reality, and I think you've, you've been talking about this for some time, but what are the things and the techniques that you as a leader have really come to, have you learned something new in the last week that says, I need to really now take what we've been talking about and take it to another level? Hi, Guillermo. I, I learned many things uh, in the last uh, week. That one of the things that I learned is that reality sometimes spread the uh, imagination. I was hoping that there will be an acceleration in the future work uh, towards remote uh, models. And I was pushing legislation to request the use of a technology that will accelerate work from home and uh, contractors a verification software and things like that. So I learned also that the curve on a urgency of companies, and, and this I learned today from having five CEOs of financial companies in Spain, a, a calling me to, to ask for, for our support because they have been working a, for 11 days a, remotely and shifting from having a few a people in one case like a hundred to thousands of people of all levels and all uh, skills and qualifications working remotely with no no protocol so mm -hmm. my perception is like that companies are a lot uh, less prepared than what i expected to have to deal with an emergency like this uh, so it's a uh, and the, the tipping point for uh, having be becoming really concerned about that is uh, roughly after two weeks of having people in the um, uh, remote work setting because initially of course the uh, security and safety is first so they need to move people from home but then uh, as Maslow pyramid explains like we need to look for productivity so two weeks into remote work, companies start to get like super concerned yeah. about how they actually manage the remote teams. And as I said, we have some um, protocols. We are launching with the Inter-American Development Bank, a cloud working academy to teach companies online a step by step on how to develop the a work from home manuals, how to uh, do the uh, processes and protocols from communications to work and reporting, the review of different tools to, to help them transition. And we are trying to help also by giving away our platform to uh, small companies and also to startups and startup led by women. But it's going to be bad. Uh, but I think that if we do it right, uh, it will be a uh, much better because it will really find the way that things are done and it will be extremely beneficial for many companies. So I'm enrolling uh, now uh, partners. Uh, Telefonica is one of our investors and their 
a team uh, that runs digital transformation will do consulting on uh, helping companies to to transition uh, better to to these uh, scenarios. But it's cascading, Guillermo. In Spain, okay. it's really bad. In Italy, it's really, really bad. In Latin America, we are st starting to get concerned. And in the US, we are like blissfully unaware, but it's going to be bad as well. Yeah, and I think I think you're right. And I think it's, uh, you know, and and Daryl and I and others have been talking about this too, is creating, you know, the APIs and the ecosystem are going to be more important than ever that we bring our respective capabilities to the table. Like in my case, now I'm running a company called CloudSpot, which is really around, um, you know, how do we gather the, the sources of data, whether it's human, IoT, you know, analytics from from uh, AI to to really look at location, movement, spatial, facial recognition, behaviors, and and give information back to to corporations, to to retail, et cetera, on you know what does the real future look like, and and you know that building that you had before. It may not be the building that you're in going out of this thing. So what kind of information can we give you so that we can make better decisions? So at some point, maybe we can connect on how we, we take our capabilities and one plus one plus one equals 20. Absolutely. And, and this is also an, uh, an open invitation to, to all of you. We're building this together. And I think that it's critical that we uh, put all the resources. As I said, I'm, I, I run a startup scale up, so I would love to uh, do much more. Uh, but I think that there will be a massive transformation. And if you have businesses that are uh, related to consulting, we have the blueprint, we have everything, we just don't have the arms. So please feel free to, to reach out for uh, building collaborations, even to take the solution to the businesses. I think that it's a gigantic opportunity to uh, hack many of the issues that companies have from talent acquisition to retention to efficiency. But we, as you said, need to build this ecosystem and work together on that. And if there is anything uh, that I can do to assist any of, uh, of you, of course, I'm super uh, available, but also I'm, I'm willing to invite you to see ways in which we can partner up to, to build a, a, a set of solutions to, to help companies better adapt. Because I think there is no way back. It's even when companies go back to normal after coronavirus, their employees will tell them the job that you told me that it couldn't be done from home, it, it was done from home and it was done right. So despite mm -hmm. of Coronavirus will be hopefully soon, sooner or later, hopefully sooner. Uh, but the, the change in the, the way the things are done. And you know Guillermo very well because Cisco has been a pioneer in remote work for many, many years. I, uh, but not many companies have that, that level of awareness on how to, to do it. Yep, agreed. Okay, so we have one more question um, live, and then we have a few questions that were typed in. Silvina, if that's okay? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So our next person is um, Roberto Ricosa. Roberto, are you there? Oh, oh my good friends, Roberto. Do I need to do a video call to see you? <laughs> I wish that my video was enabled, but uh, it's not. Zoom was only for audio, so but that's fine. Well, it's nope. always nice to hear you. Abs absolutely, Al always a pleasure. So uh, I do have a question. So, so actually it's two, two questions. Well, the first one is uh, with all this uh, remote teleworking and pre basically people having to do their, their work from different places, primarily home right now, how do you see the security aspect? Because now before you would have people going to the office and you would have somewhat this, the information in particularly almost like one place, even though it might be in the cloud. But now as people are moving outside and having to work remotely, how do you, how do you see the security aspect of the information? It will be extremely challenging and cybersecurity companies will have a blast uh, because now they not only need to see 
what type of network they will be using, but also with whom they are sharing that type of network. And then the VPNs uh, need to be enabled. So there are like three main aspects that have to be addressed. And again, this can bring as well a gigantic business opportunity for many, many companies, the companies that do cybersecurity and that enable secure uh, networks are uh, ones that will be also very, very benefited. If you've seen, for example, like Zoom, uh, their uh, stock price raised 25% in the few days of uh, the US uh, lockdown. So it's a very important consideration that as part of the protocol that need to set up to make sure that people are uh, work from home ready from the security standpoint, they, they hit all the check marks. I can send you the uh, uh, preparation that we have done with ADP or like with even with Google when we sold them the technology because they, there are many different aspects, but someone that uh, knows cybersecurity, I'm sure there are much more, um, many people in, in this call that uh, can, can also contribute and make a, a consulting practice out of uh, out of that, on a, what it comes to our technology, we are hosting AWS, and uh, they are uh, they, they basically the the, the uh, security is taken care by by their security protocols. But it's also another consideration that needs to be kept in mind is the use of data, which not related directly to security, but somehow it is GDPR. That's another consideration. So this is like a multi-layer uh, challenge from how you make it work for people to make sure they're actually working, how do you enable collaboration, how do you set up not only the networks to have secure network, but also how do they set up from the uh, architectural standpoint, the, the home office, how right. it works and what it works. So it can be done, I mean, I suggest that for that we do perhaps like a, a multi-speakers video calls with experts on each, each one of the aspects related to, to remote work because I, I think it's extremely important, but it's also a very, very a specific and a lot of people, many people Absolutely. will be able to give you a better response. Uh, absolutely. And then one, ju just uh, th thanks for your comment. One, ju just one more, more comment on this. Uh, and even though everything we've been talking about right now is around the business side of the equation, right? So people working from home and people kind of uh, engaging remotely. Uh, one of the things that we're starting to see a lot is, of course, now students having to study remote. And uh, I don't know, do you see any, any potential on maybe a transparent, not business, but transparent learning or something like that? How, how would you apply something like this towards that? Because that is gonna be a huge boom after we all go back to our somewhat of our normal lives. I would venture to say that a lot of people are gonna start thinking about how to do more remote learning. Yeah, Roberto, not only that, like I have a online streaming of fitness classes, so it will open up a, a lot of new, new industries. Uh, there are many solutions for online learning that are much better than what we have. We can track, we have, for example, in Ecuador, a program with um, Guillermo Lasso, who is the, the owner of uh, Banco Guayaquil, and we are working to train in collaboration with Google and AWS students from IT universities to, into cloud experts. So we are a partner with Coursera that uh, facilitated by Google provide the training and also with AWS Educate. So they are taking the courses in Coursera. We are feeding the talent into the platform. We track the time that they spend studying, but I'm very, very confident that over the next few weeks there will be e-learning e enterprise grade platform where companies can e put their training e online but also universities and e K-12 because this is not only the universities it's just right. basically all education like people have their kids at home and, and perhaps even some divor divorce counselors because having the family <laughs> all together at home 24-7 will bring extra challenges so how we cope with 
the situation in which we need to work from home with everybody locked in house arrest, it's, it's another, another challenge. And, and there are many, many things that need to be addressed uh, on that regard as well. Cool. Thank you very much for your comments. You're very welcome, Robert. So, Silvina, we have some questions that were shared in our Q&A chat box. Um, so, I'll go through them and I hope that you can answer them. Um, so, the first question was, is the tool that you shared a proprietary tool? Yes, yes, it is. We developed it uh, several years ago. We did enhancements and different uh, versions. And again, we developed this tool because we needed to have visibility on what our team was doing and then we realized that it was a massive shift in how our business can be run so we started to uh, license it starting first uh, by creating a talent marketplace with technology to provide talent with verification and uh, now that we uh, saw probably i think like it was a, a year ago that companies were much more ready to embrace distributed uh, models and many startups were uh, actually born uh, with an exponential mind. Exponential meaning from Singularity University, like using on demand uh, talent and growing uh, super fast by leveraging from, in this case, talent as a service. So uh, we have um, a, a, a technology that basically addresses that and was developed by our own, own engineering team. Great, thank you. So I have um, so a couple of questions that I think goes towards the same purpose around culture. How are there any best practices on how to increase engagement in virtual communities? And another question that came up that I think deals with this, something similar is um, thoughts around the human aspect of our current situation. So not just working from home, but now with the shelter and home declaration, how do we keep folks motivated and engaged, um, especially with family dynamics in these times? So two very good questions. In terms of culture, we can talk about uh, this uh, for hours. There are many different things that can be done. And, and I think it all starts with the vision and the ability to communicate what the company is stand for. And, and then comes the tools like, what we said, like face time, again, it's a, it's a kissing, not only to glue the team together for practical productive purposes to get the things done, but also like, for example, we organize a, a virtual happy hours. We bring people on the team when some of us get together to just basically show them what we are doing. We do fun stuff and challenges. We have a a chat channel uh, with a hashtag for nonsense stuff that it's for funny, funny things. But more important when you think of a culture is like the feeling of community and how you build a community with a shared purpose and vision. It's not different from what it happens in the physical place. It's just that when you are in a physical place, you don't fear, you don't fear the isolation because you are not isolated. So using video conferencing, using group chats and uh, making people feel, uh, feel that they are part of a community is key. But I can send some materials and I can also, if uh, someone is interested, we will be doing some online um, uh, training classes. We are launching cloudworkingacademy.com with the Inter-American Development Bank. And we will cover in every week different aspects of, of these challenges, uh, challenges. So if you are interested, please follow up with me and I can share what I have and what I learned. It's not universal knowledge. It's uh, limited to, to our practice, but we'll be super happy to also bring on board other uh, founders who can share their experience on uh, running remote first organizations because these people are the ones that are at the forefront. But creating a company uh, remote first is different as well than making feel that people that are uh, working remotely are uh, engaged because they, if you want a successful company, you need to make sure that there are no differences except from avoiding the office politics between the people that are collocated and the people that are working remotely. 
So not different of privileges because this this also hurts a lot. But I can if, please send send them my uh, well. There is my email. If you want to to follow up, uh, I'll be happy to 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 expand on on this as well. And the other Vivi was related to the current situation. And what can you please repeat the question? Yeah, of course. Um, so kind of um, referring to the human aspect of our current situation um, and the, the possibility of shelter and home declaration, how do we keep people motivated and, and engaged and functioning in their, in their roles, especially now that they're integrating their home and family? Wow, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult question because I don't have all the answers. What I can share is what I learned also in a, this uh, last uh, two weeks in which um, the uh, state of emergency and the lockdown happened in different markets where we have team members and uh, what it helps me personally is like there are a, a, um, first the, the sense of community how do we bring together uh, other people and how do we get together to share information like there are several uh, chat groups related to coronavirus that brings together people. I am like uh, in five at least, and it's just like the chat of the mummies of the school. It's like super crowded. It sometimes get overwhelming, but there is a lot of information on how to uh, keep your kids engaged and not bored, how to uh, uh, deal with the stress, how to cope with the new reality of being like all crumble in, in some cases like small apartments how to uh, handle all these situations and being aware of the possibilities and the restrictions related to what can be done and what cannot be done like yesterday there was a lockdown announced in argentina uh, in log had been already in lockdown for for weeks here in the u.s my mm, biggest shock but that was yesterday I went to the gym and the pool and it was closed and I feel that people are not like super aware of the complexity of of the situation so I think that uh, getting together celebrating the people that are providing services like the health uh, care workers are the real heroes participating in uh, these whatsapp chats or, or groups and just sticking together and seeing how we can help each other, like peer support. I think it's, it's very important, but I will go back to you and ask you what it works. And perhaps we can compile something as a community and start sharing the best practices that we are learning from, from other people as well. Thank you, Silvina. Um, I do wanna be cognizant of our time. We do have a few more questions. I don't know if folks wanna stick around, more than happy to continue asking questions but we can always share these questions um, and send them to you, Sabina, and maybe we can um, share them back with folks afterwards. So I just want to be respectful of, of time now that we've hit, a hit our, our hour mark. If, if you want, uh, Vivi, I'm here, I'm available, but if you want, uh, we can use uh, the Facebook group of the community. If they can post it there, we'll be super happy to respond to anything they, uh, they want and also post some resources and information that I uh, found useful and, and invite you to, to all do the same. I, I think the best thing of these situations is crisis brings people together. Uh, and as Chinese said, uh, it also brings a lot of uh, new opportunities. So perhaps we can do that if you agree. That would be great. I think there's definitely um, ways where we can keep this community together. So I'll be sure to work with you on um, putting like putting something like that together and continue communicating with folks. Thank you so much for kicking off our webinar series. It was such a pleasure to have you and um, really excited that folks are coming together in this manner. So thank you so much. Um, a couple of quick things to the group. I'm going to put in the chat our link to our um, high tech town hall if folks want to register and we'll be sharing a survey as well. So please share your feedback. Um, this is the first of many of these sessions, and so we always want to get better at what we do, so thank you so much. And I do want to make also a quick comment around, um, I know there was a mention about, you know, security and working remotely. 
um, um, our friends from Link America are going to be doing a webinar session in a couple of weeks um, regarding um, cybersecurity and working remotely. So you can definitely check that out if that's something of interest. So again, Silvina, muchísimas gracias. Always such a pleasure and look forward to doing this again soon. My pleasure and thank you everyone for, for allowing me to, to share here. Thank you so much and please stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Bye bye.